Chodesh Elo. Hard to believe, but it's Chodesh Elo already. And we all know that Rosh Hashanah is coming. Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Rosh Hashanah Rabbah, Simchas Torah. So as always, as we wait for people to come on, let's sing a little bit. And then we're going to learn about Chodesh Elo. So this nigan is from Musaf of Rosh Chodesh. And the words are, Vahavi Enu Litzion Ircha Barina. Bring us to Zion, your city in happiness. Yerushalayim Beit Mikdashcha B'Simchat Olam. And to Yerushalayim, the place of the Holy Temple, in everlasting joy. I Welcome everyone, Chodesh Tov, Chodesh Elo. So it's hard to know where to start. 30 days to Rosh Hashanah, so much to think about, so much to learn, so many changes we're going through, so many changes the whole world is going through. So we have to start somewhere. So I just want to mention now, I'll mention it again, that in the course of this coming month, I will be giving 10 classes, most of them not on 2020 Insights. Um, I'm doing it for other organizations, but we will be posting the videos uh, within a day or so of recording them. And so in this month, you will be getting via email 10 different shiurim about Chodesh Elo, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, the whole thing. So I wanted to start 
with a, a beautiful teaching from Reb Zusha, famous Hasidic Rebbe from Anapoli. And the reason I wanted to choose this is, as we'll see, it's connected to the Parsha, Parsha Shoftim. And it's also in, in, in Kabbalah, it's very, there's a very big idea of, of having models. So we go into Chodesh Elo, and there's like, where, where do you start? How do you do tshuva? What, there's, so, there's so much to think about. So what I'm going to present tonight is a teaching from Reb Zusha, who took the word tshuva, and tshuva has uh, five letters, and he picked five verses that began with the different levels of tshuva as a way of teaching what is tshuva. What are we supposed to be concentrating on in this coming month? And so these verses give us an anchor. They give us a foundation on how to approach tshuva. So I'm going to go through them relatively quickly because 2020 insights were trying to stick to around 20 minutes and then we're going to go back to the first one because that's from this week's parsha so the first letter of tshuva of course is tough and so the pasuk that reb zusha chose comes from this week's parsha anyone who wants to take notes here it's devarim chapter 18 verse 13. And it's tamim tiya im Hashem elokecha. Be wholehearted, be sincere, be completely given over to being with, walking with Hashem your God. So that's the first pasuk. Like I said, I'm going to go back over this one and the whole second half of this uh, Devar Torah to be wholehearted with Hashem. So Rabbi Zusha picked this because if there was ever a time to be honest with ourselves, be honest with Hashem, it's Chodesh Elo leading into uh, all of the Chagim, the high holidays. This is when we need to be sincere and for real, really for real. The second verse is Shin, and that comes from Tehillim, chapter 16, verse 8. If anyone's taking notes here, or you can watch the class again and take notes. And the Shin is Shaviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid. I put God before me at all times. So Rabbi Zusha is telling us, tshuva, it, there's, all, there's two levels to tshuva, doing tshuva on those things that we have, let's say, done wrong or missed a mark or regret or wish we wouldn't have or wish we would have done better. And then the other level of tshuva, as everyone knows, comes from the word to return, to come closer to Hashem. And so here, Rabbi Zusha is pointing out, Shaviti Hashem Lenegdi to me, I put God before me at all times. In other words, I want God involved in my life. I want to see how God is involved in my life all the time. I want to open my eyes. I want to open my heart. I want to open my mind and realize that God is everywhere. And I want to put God before me at all times. I'll mention, though, Kabbalistically, a different way of reading this is I put the name Yud and He and Vav and He before me at all times. Meaning this name, the four-letter name of God, the most essential name of God, actually means to come into being. That's why some people, instead of Hashem, say Havaya. Because these letters, a Yud and a He and a Vav and a He, literally means to bring into, into being, to become. And so the idea of putting 
the process of coming into being at all times before me. In other words, God is recreating the world every split second. The world is coming into being. And of course, in Rosh Hashanah, it's a new year. We're giving birth to a new year. We're giving it birth to a new self. We're giving birth to ourselves again. And so, Shaviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid. I put this process of always coming into being in, in the previous generation it was called Be Here Now because the, the, the letters of Yud and He and Bav and He is Haya, Hove, Yiya, was, is, and will be. But the past is happening in the present. As we all know, we're thinking about the past all the time in the present. And the future is in the present. It's already in, in, in being born in the present. So that's the shin. The vav of tshuva is vahafta l'recha kamocha. Shall love your neighbor as yourself. Rabbi Akiva said this is the great principle of the whole Torah. And Hillel, when he taught the prospective convert, he put it in the negative. Do not do to others what you would not want them to do to you. And this is the whole Torah. The whole Torah. So in Chodesh Elo, it's not only that we want to come close to Hashem, we want to come close to our own Neshama, but we live in the midst of a people. We, whether we're in Chutz arts and we're involved in a community, or here in Eretz Yisrael, where it's it's palpable that we are part of a a people. We're surrounded with the idea of nationhood, of, of people. And so part of tshuva is to realize our part among the people and to learn to love people. And really by extension, it means to love all people because we're all created in the image of God. So a good part of tshuva is learning to reach out and express our love, not just intellectually, but to express our love. For those who are just tuning in now, what we're doing is we're taking the word tshuva and going letter by letter and seeing that there's a verse, an acronym that will begin a teaching about tshuva. So the next one, in the next letter in tshuva is a bet. And that is, In all of your ways, know him. This was a big, big teaching of the Baal Shem Tov. And a foundational principle of Hasidut that being close to Hashem doesn't just happen when we're davening or we're learning, or it's Shabbos, or it's a, it's a holiday. But in everything that we do, there is an opportunity to know God. God is sending us messages. Heaven is sending us messages all of the time, in, including in all of our mundane pursuits. We are constantly uh, have opportunities to be close to Hashem. When we're eating, we're taking care of our children, we're going to work, we're at work. This is a big, big part of tshuva, is not to separate our lives into there's my religious part of my life, which might only be a couple of hours a day, if that, and the rest of my life. Now the idea is to come to know God in everything that we do. And the, the final letter of tshuva, the word tshuva is a hey, and this is from uh, Micha, uh, chapter 6, Pasuk 8, which is 
To walk humbly with Hashem your God. Now why is this such an important part of tshuva? Is because truthfully to do tshuva, there has to be a certain amount of humbleness and not think we're the center of the world, that the whole world revolves around me and I need to have my way and be totally egocentric. A big part of tshuva is having just a natural humbleness before the creator of the world to realize I have made mistakes and I could do better and to admit it, admit it and not be afraid to ask for divine assistance. So the process of tshuva takes a lot of humbleness. So we've gone through, I'm going to go through them quickly again, and then we're going to go to the first one, because as I said, it's, it's in this week's Parsha, and I want to concentrate on that. So the tough of tshuva is tamim tia im Hashem elokecha, be wholehearted, sincere with your God. The shin is shaviti Hashem negdi tamid. I put God before me at all times. I see God as part of my life. I see God's providence everywhere I go. The, the vav is vahafta l'recha kamocha. You shall love your neighbors yourself. Now, I didn't mention before, but I'll mention now that the, the, the pair verse that goes with this, of course, is the hafta et Hashem elokecha, that you should love God with your whole heart and your whole soul and your whole might. And in v'hafta l'recha kamocha, the verse ends, ani Hashem. Love your neighbor as yourself, I am God. And they ask, why does it have to say I am God after that? doesn't say that after every every mitzvah. But we're taught here is that if you want to know who I am, if you want to get close to me, this is God speaking, then get close to other Jews. Get close to other people. Be a good person to everyone. And then you'll know who I am. The bet of tshuva is b'chol d'rachecha de'ehu. That tshuva is, is a complete process of integrating the, the, the divine nature of our soul and <clears throat> awareness of God in everything that we do. Everything is an opportunity to come close to Hashem. And the hey is hatsne lechet m'ashem elokecha, to walk humbly with your God. So now we're going to go back to the first one. Tamim tia im Hashem elokecha. What does it mean <clears throat> to be sincere or wholehearted? Now one of the reasons that we uh, translate tamim as wholehearted is because Uncleus in his uh, translation into Aramaic, he says shalim im Hashem elokecha. You should be at peace. You should be whole. The word peace, shalom, comes from the word to be whole. When do we have peace? When we feel whole, we feel not disjointed, we're not broken in a million pieces. When we feel whole is when we feel at peace. And so our, our, our goal is to be whole with God. In other words, uh, this is a whole other discussion, but psychologically, so many people are either very consciously or subconsciously upset with God or angry with God or feel abandoned by God. And if it's subconscious, it's very hard to be whole with God if in the back of our mind or our heart, we're like, God, why are you doing this and why are you doing that? 
And so to be able to be whole with God, it doesn't mean that all of our questions are answered, especially in the world today. I would say it's, it's it would be very difficult to say anyone's all of their questions are answered. But the idea is even when we have questions, we can be whole with God, just like with another person. There's really no such thing as a perfect relationship between anyone. We all have our questions at times. But that doesn't mean that we don't love the person or are loyal or are ready to give our all. So that's the kind of wholeness with God. Now in this Parsha, this Pasa comes after a, a number of verses where the Torah warns us against magical practices and bordering on uh, witchcraft and all kinds of attempts, especially to discern or divine the future through all kinds of mechanisms in order to know how to operate, to know what to do. So I want to read Rashi. It's amazing, amazing Rashi. There are five words in this verse. Tamim tia im Hashem Elokecha. Five words. And it turns out that Rashi makes a statement that is easily broken into five different parts. So what does Rashi say? So he, he says like this. He's explaining what does it mean to be whole with God. And again, after all of these warnings not to indulge in all kinds of attempts to uh, figure out the future through all kinds of signs and um, magical uh, devices. So he says, <clears throat> You shall walk with him in sincerity and wholeness. Now here there's a very deep hint in the word hitalech, you shall walk with him. Because we said that the last verse that Reb Zusha picked to teach us how to approach tshuva was hatsne lechet im Hashem elokecha. Also this idea of walking, hitalech, lechet. And we have a verse where God says to Avram, he says, Walk before me. God is saying to Avram, walk before me and be, be whole with me. So here we see that from, the, from, from Avram Avinu, everything that Avram Avinu did, all the Avot and the Imahot, the archetypal figures, so God already said, walk with me, walk before me, and be whole. So Rashi is hinting to that, that in, in, our, in our blood, in our spiritual DNA from the time of Avram, we have this idea of walking not just with God, but before God. Just like Avram was a trailblazer, and he uh, spread the knowledge of one God in the world. That's what God would like from us, is to walk before him. What's the next thing that Rashi says? Betitzapelo, and anticipate him. Look for him. Instead of looking for all these uh, witchcraft or uh, Ouija boards or um, astrological predictions or raising the dead in a, a ceremony in order to find out the future. Titsa Pelo, look to God and through prayer 
and meditation will know how to act. Through following the Torah will know how to act. The next thing Rashi says is, achar And don't, don't try to figure out the future from all of these practices. In other words, we should have basic faith and trust that if we follow the Torah, we're good people, and we do our best to be moral and ethical, and we use our free will to do good things, we don't have to run after trying to, trying to conjure up some prediction about the future. Uh, this is so important before Rosh Hashanah because Rosh Hashanah is Yom Adin. Rosh Hashanah is a day of judgment. And yet, and it's a serious day, it's days of awe, Yamima Nora'im. But nonetheless, especially in the Hasidic tradition, Rosh Hashanah is a joyous time. Sukkot is the season of our joy. But ask a simple question, does anyone really know how the year is going to turn out? We have no idea, really. For all we know, <clears throat> not such good things are going to happen. God forbid. But no one knows. But we just have basic trust and basic faith that I... I I do my best to do tshuva, and I have to trust that my soul is in God's keeping. So that's what Rashi is saying, that we don't have to run after the future. We should anticipate and have faith in God. Okay, the next thing that Rashi says, Ela kol ma alecha kabel betmimur. And everything that comes upon you except in sincerity, in completeness. In other words, don't fight life. Is things, especially now, when you think about it, is like so many of us feel like we're not in complete control here. Is like there's so many factors outside of, of anyone's power right now. The world is getting a huge lesson here about who who's in charge here, what's going on. And so when we go into Rosh Hashanah, it is a teaching is, like I said, on, on Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur, we come out of Yom Kippur and we trust everything will be good. We trust God. And if it's, if it's not what we at, at least call good on the surface, we trust that it's for the best also. This is so deeply ingrained in uh, Jewish consciousness. Gam zula tova. This, this is also for the good. And the last thing that Rashi says, and with this we'll end our 2020 insights for tonight, is v'az tiyya imo v'chalko. And then you will be with him, with God, and his portion. Now this can be interpreted in many ways that when we do what this Rashi is saying, when we walk with God in sincerity and we look to God for guidance and we don't run after uh, all kinds of promises of someone who can tell us what the future is going to be, and we learn to accept life as it unfolds and try to make the best of it, then we will be with God and his portion. Now, there's a very deep hint here because we're, we're told that our divine soul is a chalak me'eloka me'al mamash. Chalak eloka me'al mamash. An ab, absolute portion of God above. And that's hinted to here. But as tia imo, the chelko, you'll be with his portion. But his portion is revealed through your soul, which has a portion in God. 
So we'll end tonight. This is just the beginning. It's Rosh Chodesh Elo. I want to end with a bracha that for everyone, everyone, we should have good health. We should be strong. We should have faith in Hashem. We should approach this month with joy, but with great seriousness. I have to share with you that this morning, uh, my wife and I, we, we went up into Canada Park, if anyone knows where that is, and we did our speed walk and we davened there. And we're told that in the month of Elo, the king is in the field. It's a, it's a parable, it's, a, it's a, 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 an image that God is accessible. God leaves his, his palace, his uh, throne room, and he comes out to be near the people before Judgment Day. He wants to see what's happening and he wants to be close. So I was outside and it was like, wow, the king is in the field. I'm so happy that I'm, I'm dominating outside. So I just, I, I want to suggest to everyone that not just even once or twice, but take advantage, even if it's your, your backyard, even if it's a, a park down the street, uh, a, a nature reserve, a state park, uh, whatever, get out in nature and think about it. The king is in the field. It's a chance to do heat bodudut, chance to uh, contemplate, to do tshuva, to open our hearts, to call out to Hashem, to look deeply inside. And God willing, this will be a new year. We all need a new year. There's no doubt about it. The entire world needs a new year. A year full of good health and strength and for so many people who are challenged uh, with their making a living now, because of the circumstances, it should be a year of, of, of livelihood and parnasa and shalom bayit and closeness to family, closeness to friends, despite the great distance and so many things that we're used to in, in community that we can't do now. But Bezrat Hashem, in a new year, things will not just get better, but we want something new. Or Chadash al Tzion Ta'ir. Need a new light. Bezrat Hashem, this will be the year. I just want to remind everyone that during uh, the next month or so, I will be giving 10 different classes. Not all of them will be live. Most of them actually will not be live. <clears throat> They'll be recorded for different organizations, but then we'll put them out on our email. They'll be on our website. They'll be on Facebook. So we have a lot to give over leading up to Rosh Hashanah, and hopefully we will see you soon. Take care.